All right, welcome to the Robert Show. We are here at Ultra Red X Vision 2024. Super excited to be here uh, with one and only Jim. I just saw your talk. Thanks for uh, giving such an exceptional talk and uh, giving us all the great insights. Uh, just for audience, would you like to introduce yourself? Tell us more about what you do at A Master. I know you're the founder, but then would love to know a little more. Thank you. I appreciate that, and thank you for the invitation. I'm very honored. My name is Jim Griffin, and I'm the founder, as you said, of AI Master Group. I'm also a faculty member at the University of Texas in Austin in their master's program there. The AI Master Group has got a YouTube show. I put out uh, once a week a video, usually about an eight-minute video, about various topics related to AI, whatever the latest paper is or something like that. Love it. And then there's also a podcast that's just launching now. Thanks. Thanks for sharing that. Uh, also, uh, just a little about your talk. I've seen the talk uh, and I'm pretty sure our audience would love to know a little about as well. So can you share some key takeaways? I saw people asking questions, the community wanting to know more about it. Would you like to share a little about your talk? What was it about and how will it help the larger community? Okay, sure. Uh, let me give you a nutshell, yes. and then you can ask any follow-up questions. So the talk basically was about a very interesting and innovative program for the public good, yep. which was sponsored by the University of California, Santa Barbara, and it, it relates to detecting sharks in the water in a beach called Padaro Beach. Mm. And this is a beach where surfers and sharks are both found, sometimes yeah. together. And so the idea is to try to detect the sharks before they bite you. Right. And so what I was describing was a program where there's a drone that flies over mm. about 200 feet above the ocean surface with a very small camera. And it's employing YOLO version 8, nano version, of course, because it's on the edge device. Yes. Yes. And it's detecting objects that are sharks distinguishing those from objects that look like sharks, like seals and otters and other kinds of animals that kind of shape in a similar way. And sending those alerts via SMS to about 80 people who have subscribed to be aware of it, like lifeguards and owners of surf shops and parents of children that are taking surfing lessons there on Padaro Beach. Very helpful. Looks like there are many use cases coming out of this. So, curious, just a follow-up question here, in terms of the use cases, where have you been, you know, where have you seen this implementation a lot? Uh, anything that you would like to share? So, one of the things I'd like to, to point out is that this particular use case is not something that you or I or probably anyone on your show has any idea of ever wanting to do, detect sharks in the ocean. Yeah, that's going to exactly. be one and it's done. New. Yeah. So that's not, I mean, a normal use case for vision detection is going to be detect defects on a production line or various agricultural uses or various commercial uses, making sure that stock is on a shelf or right. safety uses, is someone wearing a helmet and so forth. These kinds of things are the normal use cases. But what was interesting about this, I think, is that it was a very difficult assignment to detect sharks at various levels below the surface of the water, as seen from a drone 200 feet above the surface, mixed in with other objects that look very similar to them, yes. mixed in with choppy waves and glare from the sun and and sea floating seaweed and, and so forth in a very humid environment, salty environment where the lens might not have a perfect view. Yeah. And yet it was possible with just a nano model. Mm. This then shows that other things certainly must be possible. Yeah. So it's more from that standpoint. Yeah. Okay, that's fantastic. Thanks for sharing those insights. Uh, also, since we're on this topic of models, I'm kind of excited to also learn about uh, YOLO 11 was an announced today by Glenn, and they're making amazing progress in this space. What do you think about YOLO? So, first of all, YOLO 11, he did show an incremental improvement, mm. both in terms of accuracy and in terms of efficiency, efficiency. across all the models, right? So... There are, there's the small, the medium, the large, and the extra large yes. model. And it was across all of those as compared not only to version 8, but also to version 9 and 10. 
So I'm very excited to see that. I was given uh, pr you know, pre prior access to uh, YOLO 11, but I have not yet my report. I haven't been able to tell you whether it's indeed uh, it's still you know. in the initial phase, and then uh -huh. uh, we'll definitely look out for that report as well, Jim, from you. Yes, yes. I'm sure that it's actually going to be publicly available on Monday, correct? So then we'll all be able to see. That's awesome. Uh, one more thing that I would want to ask you is about the future of computer vision. Mm. What do you think about it? Uh, because it's been growing, but growing exponentially. So there's two things that are happening. One is exponential and one is incremental. Mm. So what's growing in exponentially is the use cases. The adoption. adoption. What's growing incrementally, and you can see that with uh, version 11, is just the performance. It's just a very little bit of performance improvement over version 9 and 10. So we're kind of there. We're, we're, it feels like we're, we're you know, at the limits of... Yep. But uh, one of the things that everybody is always working on, and I think you saw that in other presentations today is, yeah, but we're, all, we're also looking at trade-offs for how compact can we make the model? How yes. small can we make the model? And if we're going to maximize how small we can make it, we're going to trade off a little bit of precision. So what is it we're trying to go for? Are we trying to go for a very compact model on the edge? Or are we trying to go for more precision? Depends on the use case. But about 80% of the time, People are going for the compact model. Right. Most of them are edge right. applications. I love it. Uh, thanks for sharing those insights. One more quick question for you, Jim. I know you have a podcast you mentioned about, um, but I'm pretty sure the audience would love to, you know, uh, chat with you, connect with you. Which is the best place to connect and chat sure. with you? Thanks for asking. I'm uh, very available on LinkedIn. Awesome. Uh, Jim Griffin for number four AI is yes. the easy way to find me on LinkedIn. Okay. And uh, you can also reach me at jim hmm. at aimast.org. Awesome. I've got a website too, aimast.org, obviously. That's fantastic. Thanks for sharing that. And uh, once again, thanks for visiting The Robert Show. It is such a pleasure chatting with you and learning more about you know the things that you're doing in the community to help the community. And uh, we'll look out for you know the episodes that you release uh, and... Uh, you know, we'll just keep the conversation uh, going. But uh, awesome to host you. Thanks once again for doing this. It's a pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today.